So from the last video, we have our roof tile image touched up here. We basically cut it into quarters. So we have a much larger tile scale, but we also made it seamless again. So we can use this across all of our assets, basically. Now, this is um, one sample of a roof asset that we have. I'll probably end up using a few more, but once that process is covered, it's kind of the same for all um, texture touch-ups you need to do. For the rest of the textures involved in this atlas, this is going to be the first of a couple, let's say. But this might be the only texture where we need to actually fix it up. The rest we just kind of pull into the project with us. So this video, I'm going to combine this texture with a few more on a main atlas that we then bring into Blender. And I'll show you how to set up a material in Blender and apply it to our model. And we can kind of fix our UVs on the go then once we have something visual to work from. So before we get into that today, uh, there's one more piece of software I want to kind of show you here. It's something I started using recently and I highly recommend it. Again, it's a piece of free software. So this fella here, if you go to pureref.com, this is a great piece of software for, as it describes, references. But I also use it as a good way to keep notes and keep a catalog of the textures that I'm using in this specific project. So to uh, to get this, you just go to get pure ref, click on this, and it's one of those kind of, it won't cost you to get it, but if you're willing and able, you can kind of send a, a donation to it, you know, but you don't have to do that. If you just come down here to select amount and you go custom amount, It'll default to 21, but you can just erase that and slap in a zero and go to checkout and you'll see you're getting it for free then. So just click on your download button. I already have this installed and set up. So once you install this, you can open it up and just start dragging your images into it. I have a scene here, I think, somewhere. Yeah, here we go. So this is like my catalog. I just kind of keep every texture that I'm using in the project in here. And I also leave a note with the reference number here. So the reason the reason for this basically would be take you were making a stone cladding for an outdoor scene or whatever. If I had somehow destroyed one of the textures by painting onto it or lost it somehow, I know that I have a reference in here for this. So I could just come in and grab this uh this little reference number here. And if I control C on this and I'll go to my website, which is hidden behind the full screen app one second. I'll go to Substance. Now the Substance PBR here. So I know that the texture style that I downloaded was from this category, the PBR materials. So if I just paste that number into the search bar here and search, it'll show me then that's the material that I wanted. So say I wanted to re-download the normal map, say. I just come in and I find it here. And because I already have it purchased, because I bought it with a credit, uh, a while back, I bought it quite a, quite a while back, so um, it's worth it, so I don't need to pay another credit on it, I just click that and get it back, and I can drag it into my project. So it's great for keeping, like I said, a catalogue of the textures that you're using, and this is only this project, I have basically a pure ref setup for every project that I do, and I add to that. So I could take these then and bring it into a like a master file, say, so I have a catalogue of every texture that I have available to me on my computer so here i can find well let's say i like the look of uh i don't know see this kind of wooden floor i know i've got the number for it there i can search my material library and i can find it handy enough now again this isn't a step that you need to do this is just for convenience it's also great actually here for keeping the reference that you like like for instance in this i like the round tower that we might end up making one of them i like the chimney style the way the, the roof and is attached that kind of stuff this specific window I'm pretty fond of as well. So I, like anytime I see an image that I kind of want to uh, incorporate into my design, I'll keep them in here so I can look back and just kind of, it'll help me my, make my design choices as I go. One more thing as well I need to mention is on the last video, I did tell you I have two uh, sites for getting textures and I only really went into detail on one. I have another one here for, for show. This one here, Polyhaven. Go to polyhaven.com. You don't even need to set up an account on this one. This gives you great textures as well, but a much higher resolution. So say you have what we call a hero prop. Say like there's a, say you're making a game level where your player has to go through an ornate door or something where you kind of want it to have a lot more resolution. 
these, if you go into textures here, these offer their textures in 4K. So you can get a very high quality texture from this as well. And the textures themselves are beautiful too. Like there's a, here's a lovely red brick one. Um, there's a couple of scene in here I wanted to actually get. And I don't think this has a cap on it. So you can actually just download all of these if you wanted and have them in your material library on your computer somewhere and pull from it every time you, you want to do something. So for a uh, sake of demonstration, I'm going to say we are making, that's quite a nice stone brick wall. We just click on this and here you have the resolution up in this, uh, this corner, one of 4K download. You can actually go up to 16K, which is pointless for this, unless you're doing like production and you want crazy high textures. Stick with 4K, you can always downscale them if needed. Um, actually, 2K are probably safe enough with, but 4K is there if you want a very high detail prop as well. And I'm not too sure what this does, to be honest. You can just get them in a zip file, I guess. I don't really understand the Blender one. I haven't tried download that. Maybe it's something you bring it in in a material setup form. I'm not too sure, but I usually just uh, click the download there and get them. Get You get all the maps. Um, so... I think these are the maps you, you get in it. You get your normal, you get your color, you get your roughness. You also get a height map in there. So you can go through this and pick the materials you want and just click the download there and do yours. I don't think you need to like the way uh, textures here. This gives you a 15, 15 free capacity per day. I don't think Polyhaven has a cap. So you could literally just spend your day downloading these textures. Just have them in your... I have like an entire hard drive full of textures that I use. So that's a, a setup option. Again, that's pure ref. It's not necessary for this. I just have it as a, it kind of makes, it makes my life easier to find the textures that I want for a specific design. So with that, I think I'm gonna pull a few of these out and use on my first of many texture references. So that's, um, this is the roof texture we used. This is it before we cut it up, so again, we're kind of only using the top corner of it here. Um, I have that, and I'm probably going to use maybe, I like this kind of rustic look for a wall. I'll probably take that, and I want to use this for the wood, because I like the way it looks kind of weathered as well as outdoors, but that would be nice if we were to kind of UV our window frames onto this texture, it would be quite nice. And maybe I'll get another wall as well, because it's nice to have a little bit of diversity in the, the style of wall. That's quite a nice one there, medieval brick. So I think I'll take those four. I'm going to take the roof tile, the rustic brick, the medieval brick, and the wooden plank. And I'm going to start bringing these in. I'm going to compile them now into a set of textures that we can use in Blender. So I'm going to use Krita for that again. I'll go to new file and predefined here I'm going to go with a 4k texture I'll just create that and I know I'm going to be setting this into four so I will remove my background layer and I'll paint background layer of my own just make it black and I want to go to transform and just get this as my reference because I want to bring my guides down and I want to snap it to the center crosshair there I kind of lost it on that did I no that's that would be fine. Okay, so I'm going to start bringing the textures in. I'm going to bring in four sets. So I'm going to set up four folders here. I'll have group layer. And then I can probably just duplicate that. And I'm going to have roof tiles, if I can spell it properly. And I'll call this one rustic wall. And what else have we got? We have the medieval brick and wood plank. Okay, so let's start with the roof tiles that we done yesterday. I have these set up. Um, do I have the folder? Uh, here we go. Okay, so I want to bring in the color map, so the albedo map. Insert this new layer, and I'll bring in normal and roughness. 
Okay, so I'll grab those three here in my layer hierarchy and just drag them into roof tiles folder. Now I want to grab the folder itself and with my transform tool active I'll select it and I want to just move this up, I'll keep it in the top right and I just want to make sure that that snaps. It's kind of, if you find it's having a hard time snapping, what you could do would be, sometimes it, like, it might not snap on this corner here. If I then resize this down, I think I might have covered this in the last video as well. Hold shift and resize that uniformly. Bring it to the center of the square. It should snap a little better for me then. There we go. Oh, dang. Um, okay, uh, apologies for that. I found a new shortcut by accident. Um, if you're if you're in Crito using the middle mouse button and accidentally hit the shift key too soon, you're probably going to get this. Basically, it's rotating the canvas on me. I don't want that to happen. Um, my computer did the meltdown there while I was trying to hit hotkeys to figure out what happened. If that does happen to you and you don't know how to fix it, just hit the number five. Number five key above the, the keypad itself, not the, the number pad. Um, yeah, apologies for that. That's something I learned today. Okay, then with that, uh, with that resized and in the top, I'll just turn these layers back on for the moment so I can see the color map and how it looks. I will just start getting the other materials that I have in now. So I was going to take the rustic wall. So I'll just find my, okay, rustic brick wall. Here we go. I'm going to take in the color map. Um, I want to adjust the ambient on top of this as well, so I'll bring that in. We already set the ambient occlusion on this map in the last video, so I won't bother with that. I'll take in my normal map and my roughness. Okay, so I just need to put them in the pro proper folder now. So I'll drag them down into rustic wall. Now I need to rearrange them. I want ambient occlusion to be on the top because we're going to be setting this to a multiply layer and it'll go to, it'll multiply over the layer below. So I want my color map second and then normal map and roughness map. Okay, so with that, I'll take my ambient occlusion map and I'm going to change my layer blend to multiply. Oh, that's a little, uh, that looks like it's using a cell shade um, filter or something. Almost looks kind of cartoon sketched. I think maybe the dark lines here are a little... They're almost a bit too sharp or something. I'm going to try to add a, a, a filter onto this. I'm going to go to filter. I'll go to blur and add a Gaussian blur. And that's a bit extreme, so I'm going to bring it down a bit. Just I'm going to want to soften those dark lines up a bit. Yeah, that looks a little better. Okay, I'll select that. And even now, it's still a little bit dark. So if I reduce the opacity of it. Yeah, something like that I think would work well. Yeah, I'll take that. So I will select that ambient map and shift. Sorry, not shift, control and click the color map. Right click and merge the layer below that combines it into the color map there. So we're good to go there. We just have two more sets of textures to bring in. We've made Evil Brick, so I'll find him in my folder. Uh, made Evil Brick wall, there we go. Um, sorry, this folder's open on a different screen, so I'm just kind of dragging these in as I find them. Uh, that's color, that's ambient occlusion. Normal map. And roughness. Okay, so they went into my rustic folder. I want to grab the medieval brick ones and I'll drag them up into their own folder. And again, I want ambient occlusion on top, then color, then normal, and then roughness. So I'll select the ambient map. And I'll turn that to multiply. 
that's actually very weak. Okay, so I think that's that's that effect isn't quite enough, so I'm going to duplicate that map. With the map selected, I'll come down here to the duplicate button on the bottom. And that'll stack the effect on top, so maybe that's a bit too much. I'm looking at these little um, kind of dark areas in the, in the cavity of the block itself. That might be a bit too much, so I'm going to bring down the opacity of this one. Actually, you know what, maybe a, maybe two layers is a bit much. I'll bring both opacities down to around 60 or 60 percent. Yeah, I think that's okay. I'm gonna go with that. So with that, I'll select the top ambient map, the bottom one, and the color map. Right click and I'll merge the layer below. Now I just need to resize this. I'll select the, the folder layer itself in my transform tool active, I'll select it and I'm going to hold shift and scale this down, move it into the, I'll use the bottom right for this. And I'm going to scale this up and let it snap to the grid for me. And the bottom. Okay, so that didn't snap great for me, so I'm going to have to zoom right in and do this. Again, it's always good to be particular with this because like your like your geometry, you want you want to use the the grid snapping as well as possible here. You get a much better seamless result the better you uh the more effort you put into getting your textures right as well. So that just leaves it then with our wooden planks. So I'll bring them in. Um wherever you are. Wooden planks, here we go. Okay, so color map, ambient, normal, and ruffles. Okay, and I will put them into the wood planks folder. I'll rearrange them, so I want ambient on top, then color, then normal, and roughness on bottom. Okay, so. Before I actually adjust that ambient map, I'm going to select the layer folder and I'm going to snap this into the bottom. Yeah, there we go. So uh, that's our ambient map. I'll select it and I'll turn it to multiply. And that will give us a nice dark crevice there between between the planks. Maybe that's a little too dark. I'm gonna adjust the opacity down to probably 70. 70, yeah, that works. Okay, there we go. That's our first texture atlas done. I want to just open up each of the folders. And then I'm gonna start exporting these. We want to take tree maps out of them. So I want to turn off everything that's inside the folders. Here first though, I need to merge this. The wooden planks, I'll select the ambient map and then the color map. Right click and merge the player below. So now each of our folders has three maps. And we want to turn off all of those maps inside the folder. Okay, so from here, from here now, uh, I want to turn on all the roughness map. So that's the bottom map in each folder. That's why we went through the hassle of arranging them, just to make it easier for this bit here. And I'm going to export this now. So I'll go to File, Save As, and I'll just find. Here we go, yeah. So I'll call this Atlas. Oh, one rough. And I'm just going to copy that for the next export. So that's our roofless map sorted. Now we'll turn on the normal channels and go to File, Save As, Control, and then type Normal. 
Ah, oh, damn, I forgot to change the file type. So I want to set these to target, TGA. Actually, no, we'll go PNG. Save, okay. And I'll go back, turn off the normals, and resave the roughness as a PNG. Turn on the color maps and save that. Okay, and that's the ingredients for our first texture atlas done. So with that, we have our walls done. We've got our roof done. We've got wall variants done. I'll show you how I use these. And of course we have wood or our window frames as well. So with that I'm going to bring this into Blender and show you how to set up a material and get it, get it all hooked up looking well and then we can start adjusting our UVs to this map and see how it looks in scene.